what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Progressive Gentleman Podcast. As always, we're your hosts. I'm Dan. I'm Matt. And thank you for taking the time to nerd out about music with us. So uh, we posted a thing on our Instagram, uh, just kind of gauging people's interest uh, as to whether or not they would want us to do an episode where we essentially pit our top 10 from this year against our top 10 from last year and kind of just makeshift determine which year was the better year for music. I know there's a lot of opinionated people who listen to this, <laughs> and I'm sure there are a lot of people that'll disagree, uh, not only with our top 10s for each year, but probably our choices in this matter. But hey, this is fun yeah. for us. And uh, <laughs> You <laughs> can scream people. and shout into the void while you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> there, were, there were enough people that said that they would be interested in hearing what we had to say on the subject. So yeah, uh, 69%. Yeah, nice. nice. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're all children at heart, right? Children um, of the fence. <laughs> oh, man. Coheed reference. Already, <laughs> Had to do it. Already. We're like... Right out of the gates. Not even two minutes into this. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was curious kind of for myself, you know, thinking about all the records that, were, that dropped this year and then uh, some really, really good records last year as well. Um, you know, I kind of had the personal thought, you know, what year was better? What year do I think was better? And I was like, what, what a better way to hash it out than to, you know, sit in front of a microphone with you and, uh, yeah. and, and figure it out for ourselves, you know? So yeah, duke it out <laughs> verbally. Over yeah, and, our and, winner. and, you know, since we did change the way that we did our top 10 this year, uh, we went ahead and went back and did the same thing for our top 10s last year. We kind of made a combined weighted top 10. And that's what we're going to be using, you know, against this year's weighted top 10 list. Yeah, to make and, it a more like apples to apples kind of comparison. Right, exactly. And um, so basically how this is going to work is we're going to, you know, start with the number 10 from each year. And we're just going to kind of work our ways, work our way to the number one. We're going to basically say, OK, this year it was, you know, this album. Last year it was that album. And one of us is going to just kind of weigh in and just be like, I think this album is better. This is why. And then maybe we'll agree with each other. Maybe we won't. Um, if we do agree, then that one wins. That one gets, you know, 2022 gets the point, whatever. And then whoever has the most points at the end, we're going to just deem that the best year for music. Is this the best way to do it? I don't know. But it sounds fun. And but that's we make what we the came rules. So that's what, <laughs> that's what we came up with in a pinch. So that's what we're doing. Um, <laughs> so uh, without further ado, uh, so our number 10 album this year was Asteroids Radiant Bloom. Um, great record. And then last year, our number 10 would have been Siamese's Home record. So, uh, Matt, I'm going to let you weigh in first on this. What, what do you think? So this one, if you had asked me like a week ago, I would have been without a doubt for sure. Asteroid, just like hands down, because like I didn't really vibe too, too heavily with the Siamese album last year. but I listened to a few tracks like last week and then um, like maybe a couple hours before the podcast, I went and listened from start to finish and I like the album a lot more than I did last year. I don't know like if it just took a little bit to sink in on me or, or what, but I enjoyed it much more. I think if I had to pick between the two though i'd still go asteroid i don't know there's just something about asteroids uniqueness that still just gets me and i think for me like siamese and vola had very similar albums like or they have very similar sound like from their instrumentation but their vocals tend to be like softer more like rocky um and they both have that sort of like you know like european sound like european metal sound sure um, and I liked Vola's record better. So I think it like, I don't know. I think for me, Asteroid just slightly edges out Siamese. Uh, for a second, I thought we were going to agree, man. For a second, I really <laughs> did. Uh, as soon as you started saying, I didn't vibe with it, but then I'd listen to it and I did. I took you on um, a ride. That's what, I was, that's what I was trying to do. Make it fun. A, that was a journey <laughs> for me. Um, I agree with what you're saying about Asteroid, uh, but for me, this Asteroid record wasn't as good as their first record, their self-titled record. Um, I didn't vibe with it as much. Um, there wasn't really like a standout track for me on that Asteroid record, where Siamese, the title track was definitely a standout with Drew York. That 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 song slaps. 
Um, yeah, that, that's always then, awesome. And then uh, Honest is another track that sticks out in my head, almost sort of like a borderline sleep token ish type song. But it, you know how it's sort of like builds and crescendos into like a like a heavy ending. Sleep token does that shit all the time. Yeah. Um, so I vibe with that song a lot. Um, Erase my mind and rather be lonely are two other tracks that like come to mind. Just like just thinking about it, but um, and I know Numb's I had good too. Numb is a good track as well. I know I had Siamese higher on my list last year than you did. I don't. Did you even have them on your list? Uh, I I don't Maybe think they like made 10. my top ten. I think yeah. they were. I think they were like eleven or twelve. So they were like. Yeah, they were like borderline close, like honorable where, mention. And then I'm the same way with Asteroid this year. You had them in your top ten. I did not. So unfortunately, <laughs> I do disagree with you here. I don't know if I disagree. You know, I don't know if if my arguments with sort of home being kind of a standout track. And there's a couple on this record, but um, to me, this record has more standout tracks than the Asteroid record. So for me, I have to give it to Siamese. I, I guess like talking about like if you're if we're saying standout tracks, I do really like Eyes um, and uh, Admin and uh, and Radiant Bloom are three. But yeah, we just we named like 75 percent of <laughs> <laughs> the Siamese album. So, I mean, I think a couple of the ones that you named from the Siamese one, like weren't quite as like stand out for me as they may have been for you, but I had other ones that were stand out for me. And I feel like a very similar number for me were probably stand out on Siamese to Astronoid. And since I only slightly preferred Astronoid to Siamese in this situation, I could, uh, I could concede to, uh, wow, I hope it's this, this one out. I hope it's this easy the whole time. Now I'm basically <laughs> going to make the decision here. This is great. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, these ones like no, they... just from like how close they were in my my opinion, and honestly, because of how much Siamese grew on me in the last week from from listening to it, it was just like I don't know if you asked me in another week, I, I might be like <laughs> for sure Siamese is better the, the their yeah. album is better than than Asteroid, but I did really jam to that Asteroid album in this past year. So like to me, and maybe that's partially a recency bias. So that's why I think I'm. I'm more willing to to sway on this one. All right. So then uh is that is that your final uh, final decision on that? Yeah, lock in those lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I guess all right, we're giving first point to 2021. Siamese. That it, I hey, I I I genuinely feel like that's the right decision. I think you did the right thing here. Um, <laughs> Just looking the, at this list, it's, it's only it's going to get, get so harder. much harder, dude. So much harder. Yeah, I guess it's um, at least easy, like good that this one wasn't like. I kind of hate that I have to take the lead on this next one. To be yeah, honest, yeah. Um, so and this is nine. So yeah, God, so number man. nine, we've got uh, from twenty twenty one. We have humanity's last breath, Valde, I believe is how you pronounce yeah, it. Yeah. And cult of Luna's the long road north. So Damn, Dan, dude. what are your thoughts? Way that's re- that's really hard. So, how I look at it, ah, I, man. So, <laughs> so cult of, cult of Luna for me, the soundscape that they build in that record is incredible. Um, the ambient soundscape that they, you know, with the heavy instrumentation and just everything that they do on that record, it takes you on a journey. It's like everything I love about like progressive metal. Um, and then honestly, bringing kind of back what i used to love about like deathcore death metal which i I mean used to i still do i don't listen to you know deathcore death metal as much as i once did um but you know this was kind of a mix of what i like now versus what i used to like you know when i was more in like my deathcore death metal phase but where it's hard for me (laughs) is humanity's last breath did the same thing minus maybe building as creative as a soundscape throughout the entire record they still do that but like i feel like cult of luna maybe did that a little bit better humanity's last breath in 2021 kind of like reinvigorated my love for death core death like that those genres yeah um and i also think that record is a little bit more um the digestible if that's a if that's a good word to use there like because cult of luna some of their tracks are just freaking crazy long which again 
I listen to we listen to progressive metal. You know, most most records have ten minute plus long yeah. songs. I mean, that's just something you got to get used to. But I'm guess, trying to pick one over the other, right? So it's like, yeah, I guess you, depending on like how you define digestible, because like Valde is also super heavy, and like whereas a Cult of Luna's is too, but like Valde is like where you say like Cult of Luna building a, a sort of like soundscape. To me, like based the like with the album name, I kind of just picture this like journey in the tundra kind of thing. It's like this like long adventure in a kind of that type of thing. But then Valde paints a sound that like their soundscape they're building is like hell. <laughs> so it's yeah. just like depending on your definition of digestibles, like the songs aren't as long, but it's like heavy and nonstop. And so it's just kind of I guess you could make an it's, argument it's either way very for... like crushingly heavy i do agree with yeah. that but it, like it 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 honestly feels more like a death metal record but like then it goes into a breakdown that you don't expect and you're like oh that's why they're like considered deathcore yeah um but like a song like specter for example is one that really stands out to me off that record um where you get surprised by like clean gang vocals at the end of that like right after a breakdown or before a breakdown i don't 100 percent remember but like that song is so crushingly heavy. And then all of a sudden there's like clean vocals that you don't expect. Yeah. Um, it's, this is tough, man. I, I, <laughs> cause, cause cult of Luna for me, like I, I remember like whenever we sort of did this in album review, I kind of joking, jokingly said, um, it sounded like what the what the uh, dwarfs in Lord of the Rings, if they made like a death core record, like I imagine this is what it would sound like. <laughs> Like, I do feel like it takes you on a journey, but uh, I'm going to give it to humanity's last breath. Yeah, that's. Oh, that's that's hard, though. Yeah, I can be swayed. I want to hear what you have to say, because I can be swayed here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think so. I kind of. It was similar. I think like humanity's last breath. It. Last year, I enjoyed it and. I listened to it quite a bit and it landed fairly high on, on my list. Obviously, you know, it made nine on our combined list. Um, but it was kind of a record that like this year, I didn't really go back to it much until we started planning to do this episode. Um, and the cult of Luna one I've been revisiting, but also like, who knows if I will continue to do it. Like, into this Cause year it's, yeah because it's still kind of fresh yeah, yeah i see what you're saying so i'm trying to like f- think about how i you know how i listen to them both but i guess it's kind of so far similar where it was like i listened to it throughout the year but you know it remains to be seen if i will listen to cult of luna this year i feel like i probably will but um like you said about the digestibility i do feel like because the songs are so long and it does it does feel very like concept albumy. Like you should listen to it from front to back. So it doesn't. It's kind of like the like between the bear to me stuff with with colors, uh, colors too. It's like it's an album that you kind of do need to listen to front to beginning. Whereas you could pick yeah. up any humanities last like breath, con- like any typical like concept record. Really, like you you kind of lose out if you don't listen to yeah. it from front to back. Especially whenever it's like not just conceptual in the lyrics or like sort of the story, but it's also conceptual in the music Yeah, um, where there's like reoccurring themes and things lead into one another. And, you know, like it's when bands do that, that you kind of do miss out on the full uh, experience. If you don't listen to it from front to back. And I do feel that way a little bit about the cult of Luna record. And like you said, the humanity's last breath record I feel like is, but I mean, it's it's a little more like, yeah, you can, I can go listen, I can go listen to Spectre without having to listen to the whole record. Yeah. And, and it, I do that frequently actually. And, <laughs> and like, and why I can't really do that with cult of Luna is my two favorite songs. One's 10 minutes and one's 12 minutes. I'm like, I, I just, I don't know. <laughs> the, the one, uh, the one thing I noticed when I was listening to that, the uh, humanity's last breath album, uh, earlier today is they speak of vomit in several of their songs so that would uh, chalk one up in the uh the negative column for that it's just like <laughs> <laughs> it was just like okay why is this is the third song in a row that he's used the word vomit as a lyric i didn't realize but, that was a 
that was a big negative for you in uh in your lyricism it's like ah, if you start mentioning vomit that's that's it for me i'm done i'm out no it's meanwhile uh, we it used to listen to like somatic defilement by a white chapel and just like <laughs> headbang to that shit and yeah. re- read them lyrics yeah <laughs> much, much worse yeah no i was just kidding that, but no but i feel i i, I got you that's funny i i uh, think i would i would probably agree that like similar to the last matchup the I would I would put them pretty close in my hierarchy of music. Um, but I do think just like f- from a cuz they're both heavy albums, but I do think the like 10 minute long song might, of heaviness and also like the atmospheric stuff might not be for everybody. I mean, what's, I guess What's tough for me though in this scenario and this is, you know, maybe sort of contradicting my my choice here is now you're gonna backpedal if, well no so here's the thing like if i'm saying which record is the best which i think is what we're trying to accomplish here i guess um i probably maybe i would side with call of luna here but staying power like replay value like i feel like that has weight too and i feel like because the humanity's last breath record is very close in you know, quality, whatever you want to call it, but is also like more digestible, therefore kind of has a little bit more replay value. That's kind of why I like leaned that way, but this is really fucking hard. I could flip a coin and just <laughs> tell you like that. That's a, that's a tough one. Yeah. I'm st- I'm going to stay with humanity's last breath though. Yeah. I, I think I have to agree with that. Just like, because you got to factor in all of those things of like replayability and being able to like sit down and stuff like, I I do love that Cult of Luna album and I do like listening to it, but it is like an album that you have to have, you know, like a 50 minute or however, I forget how long it is exactly, but it's like a fairly decently length album. And I feel like you do have to sit down and listen to it from front to back, but like it's an hour and 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. I knew it was a longer one. That is. Damn. It's 69 minutes. It's an hour and nine minutes. That makes me want to kind of change my mind. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. so are we are we giving this to humanity's last breath and thus giving 2021 another uh another point i here? i think so it's it's a tough Damn. one though it i also like i struggle with uh choice paralysis on a regular <laughs> basis so <laughs> so us of, doing this episode was a bad i know i'm just kidding <laughs> no it helps me overcome oh, okay. my choice paralysis yeah you're facing your you're facing your fears here yeah I like it. i'm being forced to make a decision by my own <laughs> I made a decision to then make these decisions. So nice. I'm, like I'm working it. through it. <laughs> You're doing well. You're doing well. Uh, all right. So that's two for 2021, zero for 2022. Let's see if we can switch things up here. Um, so number eight, we had Sleep Token for 2021. We had Sleep Token, This Place Will Become Your Tomb. And then 2022, we had Satyr's Totem uh, Record. This is, this, is up, I, this is you here. Let's, let's I see know it is. Say. I hate that it is. Uh, man, I think like I hmm, this is a this is a tough one. The like hypnotize and there are like there are a few standout tracks on the Sleep Token album, but I think similarly like with the Siamese Astronoid one, just talking about the the albums with their like standout tracks is. Uh, while I I enjoyed the Sleep Token album overall, I think Hypnotize was like the main track that really like stood out to me, and like the only one that I regularly go back and listen to. Um, but Seder having uh, having Totem Bloom Haven, uh, you know I could I could name more, but those are like three that I jam to regularly. Um. I think it has more standout tracks. So I I feel like I gotta give it to Seder on this one. So that sleep token record, um I'd I'd throw out Atlantic and I'd throw out um Alkaline as standout tracks as well. Oh um, yeah, I, yeah. I like those yeah, both. Those a are lot. good ones too. Um I don't listen overall, to them as heavy as yeah. as hypnotized, but yeah, I think or no, Alkaline. it's no, it's Alkaline Al- is the one that I meant, not Hypnotize. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, Alkaline is probably the most standout track for me. But I also listen to Atlantic a lot. I love, for some reason, I I love a good song that starts slow, has like a build, like crescendo into like some sort of heavy part, and then you know whatever. Like like that's why you know Honest from Siamese. We talked about that. That's another song that does that that I like a lot. Um, so those are two standout tracks for me. But I completely agree. Uh, the Seder record for me blows this one out of the water. <laughs> you took uh, me not... for a ride there. I was like, <laughs> before we started the episode, I didn't even think. I think you said that Sleep Token didn't even make your top ten. And I was like, how's this gonna happen? That, that, they didn't. But last year was a good year for music. This year was a good year for music. And, yeah, you know, a lot of records that didn't make my top ten. I think you know maybe would have competed with some of these records we're talking about. So I mean, it's you know it's. It, it's been a lot of good music lately, but I agree completely. I think Seder also sort of like does more with their music. Um, you know, Sleep Token is who they are. Um, their sound is very distinct. Um, and I like their sound. Uh, overall, though, that album for me was a little boring. I'm not trying to like offend anybody. <laughs> um, but I mean, overall, it was a little boring. Like I said, there are standout tracks that I still listen to today, but um, that Seder record is significantly better in my opinion um i agree with all all the standout tracks that you named i agree the the title track is probably my favorite track um but they just do more um musically instrumentally lyrically i still again i respect the hell out of the vocalists that both play guitar and shred the shit out of those instruments (laughs) yeah um i just i think they're talented as hell i think they're underrated as hell and i think they deserve that this point here so i agree <laughs> yeah, awesome yeah i think this is also tough too because like i mean while they're both in the you know progressive rock progressive metal camp or you know however you want to throw them whether you say rock or metal but they're you know both in that progressive camp but they're both they tread the line they both tread the line i think yeah. i mean yeah it's it's interesting how Seder would be categorized because you know how of how many or how often they uh have harsh vocals, unclean vocals, whatever the hell that's called. I, I don't <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, same difference. I, I say that every episode we do this, and it's just like I, you know, I would think I would like land on one and just stick with it at this point, but I don't. Um, <laughs> so they would probably be closer to like the progressive metal camp, but I yeah, don't I just, even know. like their sound. Progressive, yeah, progressive metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, even though they're in that same like kind of camp, they're both very different sounds. So it's like comparing two very different bands, and I just from i mean also same very similar with siamese and astronoid and i think these matchups it makes it harder because you're kind of straddling subgenres that make them yeah, different I and mean, it's like Seder, comparing different bands that Seder does stuff where it's like almost like you know they have like emo lyric emo ish lyrics where you know some post hardcore ish type stuff that they do instrumentally um but they do it in crazy time signatures and they switch different, you know, they switch their styles up, you know, progressive music is such a spectrum and it does make this sometimes feel like we're comparing apples to oranges, even though technically this is all within the same realm. Yeah. Um, so it, it is interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I agree completely. It, it does make this kind of challenging it, you know, and it's going to get harder. Yeah. It's going to get harder. Yes, uh, so, uh, starting with the, the next one, we have uh, Silent Planet. This is from, uh, from 2021, Silent Planets Iridescent. And then from last year, 2022, for those listening far in the future, uh, Unprocessed Gold. So, Dan, what are, uh, what are your thoughts uh, on these I hate these this two? is me. I hate that this one's me. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm probably going to say that for everyone that's me. Uh, Silent Planet is one of my favorite bands. Um, Iridescent is not one of my favorite Silent Planet albums, though. Um, That's got to make this harder, then. (laughs) Yes. Unprocessed has quickly become one of my favorite bands. Um, And Gold, I think, is potentially one of my favorite albums of theirs. Oh, um, yeah, so that definitely bridges the gap with it. Yeah, so there's so there's an interesting there's an interesting sort of dilemma here for me. Um <laughs> uh damn. So, I mean, Iridescent has some standout tracks. The song Iridescent is good. Um but Rain though off of Gold, that's that was one of my favorite tracks like this past year, 2022. Um 
and that record you know, orange grove goes goes pretty hard on that record um which way am i going to go i am actually going to lean and this actually hurts me to say a little bit uh i'm going to lean on processed here i think wow. uh, i thought i was going to have to <clears throat> i was going to have to stand my ground cuz i i was going to go unprocessed with this one because i think like rain the longing and orange grove are better than anything on iridescent that being said iridescent is still a very good record and i think i'm the one that had it in my top 10 i don't even think you had that in your top 10 i think i had yeah. it six even um but i mean trilogy's a good song translate the night's pretty solid second sun is good Termin oh terminal's the best song on that record i yeah I, so i actually oh, man I, I, oh, panopticon is good shit yeah no i i still i, I stand by what i said i think uh, this it's a good record um but everything was sound and the night god slept are still like god tier silent planet records and i would even say that when the end began is better than iridescent even though it is still a good record um but the fact that i can put three records by silent planet ahead of this one um, you know, if we were comparing gold to any of those three records, I would probably lean Silent Planet, but uh Gold that unprocessed record was a standout record for me and Rain and uh The Longing and Orange Grove, they were all standout tracks for me for the whole year, let alone just this record. Um yeah, so, the, yeah, the Longing lean. The Longing is such a good track. It's it's one of my top tracks out of like all of the the bands, I think, like it was one that was heavy on my rotation too, and, um, yeah, and this one actually, this one did, you know, Unprocessed did make my top ten, whereas the previous year, Silent Planet didn't. It's it is a good album, but I think it's like, like you said, it's, it's more Silent Planet, but it's not in in my opinion too. It's not quite as good as some of their other albums. Like I like. Uh, everything was sound. I, honestly, that's probably my favorite. Panic room, so good, dude. Yeah, that's. <laughs> but yeah, then, and uh, the, earth. the night, the night God slept though. Uh, Native blood, so good. Uh, Depths too, so good. I mean, they have on their Silent Planet. It's, it's an amazing band. They yeah, make great and, music. Terminal really does have replay value for me. I do want to say that. But uh, Manuel Gardner Fernandez, the the guitarist for Unprocessed, uh, is by far my favorite guitarist right now so yeah. that's what also makes this hard for me because like i i and that's that's a new thing this year for me as well i what kind of like so i've listened to them before um but sort of what brought me back to them before this record dropped was um i saw him i was either tiktok or just instagram reels or something but he popped up on my feed playing uh his version of the theme song from interstellar on guitar Oh. Um, which is by far my favorite movie. Um, if you've never seen that film, you're missing out. I'm talking to both you and the world. <laughs> I actually haven't seen it. Dude, but I, what is, I, dude. <laughs> oh my, God. you need to, mm. all right, we're going to, yeah, that has to change. But, um, <laughs> we'll so. Have a, we'll have a uh, double date night. We'll all dude, watch that's it. Like a, that's an out of body experience, that movie. Oh, but, um, so that's what I kind of, I was like, wow, this is actually really, really good. And just the theme song is really like this just the it's you will you would like it um matt i'm talking to you but also <laughs> everyone um but i saw that and i was like wow this is actually really good and then i like went on his page and then i realized oh this is the dude from unprocessed i'd listen you know i was following them on spotify i'd listen to their previous records whatever um but i never really put a face to the band um watched a lot of his reels that day just because he's really good and that's actually where i saw the sort of early uh um like the development of the riff that became rain, which maybe that's why that song is like really good to me. Um, like, like why that has staying power with me. Um, Cause you actually saw like the making of and the, right. the process and it was behind like, it. It was cool to see sort of like the early iteration of the riff and then like how it became like an entire song with lyrics and everything and how deep that song is and how much meaning it has um, to Manuel. And, and, and just, yeah, I, I, yeah, unprocessed wins this one for me. <laughs> yeah, I think be just because they're like they're doing so much different stuff, and like the album goes heavy, but then also it has like really cool like 
kind of jazzy, like, you know, even like funky riffs in there. And, um, it's kind of got a little something for the whole family. <laughs> yeah, and this and it's another situation where, uh, you know, Manuel also sings, and so he's he's playing all that ridiculously yeah. crazy technical guitar riffs, and then also singing at a at a solid level as well. So yeah, I think and it's like no uh you know no disrespect to Silent Planet, like it's a good album, but I just think because like there are other albums are like pinnacle metalcore albums that it's just like they have similar to like with animals as leaders and like mashuga and stuff it's just like they've set bars so it's hard for them to like overachieve that bar yeah it's hard to and, write another native blood it's hard to write another panic room i mean those songs are just so i mean but he does i mean he you know uh garrett Rus- garrett russell is one of the greatest human beings in the in the <laughs> scene and just in general um and he's an incredible lyricist most of his most of his tracks are essentially like research papers most of his lyrics um and so to to, i don't want to take away from you know by saying oh you know uh unprocessed the lyrics they were deep and meaningful i mean everything that garrett writes is as well Um, yeah it's just this it just had a different feel for me and uh hit hit harder yeah Yeah. so that's that's where i'm leaning i'm final answer (laughs) <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what's that put us at? That puts a is that uh two two now? <laughs> yeah, we're at an even ah, split two shit. two. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna end up a tie and we're just gonna say everyone wins. <laughs> Peace and love. Hey everybody. We, you decide. <laughs> All right. So this next one I think I know which way you're gonna go. Yeah. Um <laughs> so <laughs> um so what would this be? Number six? Five, yep. six? Six. Five, six. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So in sixth, uh, back in 2021, uh, we had Era's self titled record. And then this past year, 2022, we had Conjurer's Pathos record. I, got uh, I already know your answer, but yeah. go ahead. Take it away. Uh, it's Conjurer's Pathos. Like, this was. This Do you was even my... need to elaborate. It was like done. <laughs> yeah. Album of the year. <laughs> end, right. of, end of discussion. No, I think. For me, I really loved Era's album. I listened to it a lot. And it was also one, I think it came out like February or March of 2021. And that was one that I listened to all year. Um, Whereas I know Conjurer's album came out a little later in the year. Um, But with how late it came out and it was still on some of like my most played songs list for the, for the year through like the Spotify wrapped and stuff. um, Just speaks to how much i enjoyed it uh and similar you know we we've talked on numerous episodes about uh my love for uh fit for an autopsy and it kind of also kind of scratches that itch too um so for me it's yeah i gotta give it conjurer's pathos i hate to do this to you man i really do <laughs> um i preferred the era record uh and i know that everybody there's going to be the majority of the people listening to this are probably like what an idiot um because i know that a lot of people whenever we posted the poll um about which top 10 did you agree with the most i think more people agreed with you than really me. i actually yeah. didn't see the results on that i was surprised because i know we initially talked and you were saying that i had zero votes it, like but it was like <laughs> and then i vote i was like i'll vote for you man it's yeah fine. you gave me a pity <laughs> vote but then I didn't I know where, even, where I landed. Yeah, I think even subtracting my vote, I think you got more votes than me. Um, wow, that's that's honestly yeah, surprising. You had people come in late to the party to to All right. bring you over the top. <laughs> and I think it's because of the love for this record. And I do get it. I mean, it is good. I For me, it wasn't as good as the Fit for an Autopsy record. And it wasn't as good as the Cult of Luna record. Um, And I don't even think I had it in my top 10, even though you had it as your album of the year, which is pretty nuts. <laughs> Um, cause usually we're not that far off. Like, you know, if you have something one, I usually have it like, you know, if, I, if it's not my number one, it's like three or four, you know, or at least made my top 10 here. It's just, it's pretty wild that it didn't make my top 10. Um, that like, what's that song? I, I Dolan or something like that. Uh, from that era. I haven't. Oh, uh, Eidolon. Eidolon. That's what yeah. it is. Uh, and from Vanish Eras. Canvas. Vanish Canvas was real good. Um, Shadow Autonomous, House of Glass. I mean that record was was really really good. 
Um, yeah, it, it honestly, like I know I kind of like decided very quickly, but it, it actually is was tough. That era record was really good. Yeah, it's 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 probably I don't know if it's their best record. Um, but it's certainly not their worst record. Um, <laughs> ne- cause like neon was good, but I think it was better than neon, which that was their record. They released before that. Um, drift is really good. Augment is really good. Yes. Yeah, so it's not their best record, but, um, it was better than their 2018 release. And for me personally, having not even had conjurer in my top 10 and with, you know, still listening to the songs off of this era record. I think yeah. that's kind of why I lean that way. Um, yeah, I think for like, I can understand why people would pick era. And honestly, I, I feel like I probably would be in the minority here by saying conjurer over era. I feel I like, don't know. I feel I like know, era man. just has like a more wide appeal just cause they've got like, they're they, more, they're more accessible. Yeah, and I think that's that's probably why I would say that most people would probably side with you on this one. Um, and so, like, I do think that Era is, like, the more approachable band and probably the one that's, like, more listened to because they, not only are they in the, like, you know, genty progressive category, but I think just, like, a lot of just straight up, like, metalcore fans love them, too. But the, like, metal elitist gatekeepers, though, are going to be, like, I'm on a list now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> For picking picking Arrow over a band like Conjure, I'm definitely on a list. But, I mean, that's just, I, I probably won't budge on that. I think this is going to end up a push, which is going to keep us tied at two. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, Pathos is a hill I will die on. I was gonna say, so. and, and and if you would change, I would tell you that you're dumb for doing that. Because <laughs> it was your it was your album of the year. If you're gonna pick an album that I think yeah. you had somewhere middle of the pack in 2021 over your album of the year, then why are we even doing this? Because clearly, then in that situation, 2021 is better than 2022. Yeah. Right? So. <laughs> yeah, I I was just uh you know expressing how I can see like that I'm probably the person that. Most people aren't going to agree with this. Although I, you did say that in the poll, more people voted for right. my top 10, but maybe it was because over my top 10 bands. in 2022. And it could just be because you had like a heavier record at the top where like my number one record was monuments, which is heavy enough, but it's not like, it's not conjurer. Right. <laughs> yeah. Not... Well, honestly, like I'm, I'm surprised though. Like, I, I don't know. I just figured of like a, a lot of people like, I feel like you a lot more, more like people metalcore f- fans. Yeah, I feel like a lot more people fall into that category, especially because of how much we talk about Coheed. Oh, that yeah. it's like more like the rocky side and like metalcore side than the like deathcore, death metal side. We have of a things. decent I think we have a decent but, mix. I, yeah. Maybe we'll do a poll and just be like, what what's your genre of choice? Yeah. Or, you know, or do you prefer yeah, I'm, I'm actually, yeah, something yeah, I'm like really that? I am curious. That. But or like yeah. put like a put like an open ended thing where it's just like what's your favorite band? I'm I'm curious. Yeah, I would be I'd be curious to see where that lands too. Um, but yeah, I guess so. This one we end up with a, a wash, yeah, so it's still so two, a wash, two 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 two. Uh, so then we're moving on to number five here, we've got uh, from 2021, Idola, the Architect, uh, pitted against Fit for an Autopsy's Oh What the Future Holds. It's like not, it's not even a fair, like not that it's not fair. Let it's funny just, it's, that it's a very similar matchup to the last it is. one. <laughs> it it's is. like a med metal core like genty kind of band against like a, a more a like tech dance, deathy. A dance Gavin dance derivative versus, versus a death core band. Um. Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> that it's like, oh man. So similar. Uh, so kind of similar to what I said about humanity's last breath and how in 2021, they sort of revitalized um, my interest in like death core, death metal, progressive death metal, progressive, whatever the hell you want to call it. Like the heavier side of, you know, music, metal music, progressive music, whatever. Um, Fit for an autopsy and cult of Luna kind of continued that for me this year. Um, And, uh, as much as I really did enjoy, uh, Iadola's record and I really did, I really, and I still do, 
I still do. Um, I am kind of leaning fit for an autopsy here, strangely enough. And Man, I, you took me on a, you took me on a, a ride there. It was like, <laughs> so I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep it up. I want to keep people on their, on their toes here. I'm in I a mean, glass gaze of emotion. <laughs> <laughs> like, so just to talk a little bit, um, on that, on that, uh, Idola record, it, it's very front loaded for me. Um, I feel like most of the good tracks are in the beginning, uh, counterfeit shrines, empty gardens, uh, and where the fit for an autopsy record for me is kind of like a journey. Like it's one of those records that I like to listen to sort of front to back. Um, and just kind of what it did for me personally, as far as just like continuing that, like revitalization in, you know, heavy music, death core, death metal, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, songs like Pandora, far from heaven, like those, those tracks are standouts for me. Um, Two Towers is another one. Um, oh, so good. Yeah, it's 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 really good. Um, and it's it's probably it's probably too good for me to to lean Idola here. Um, a lot of the Idola yes. tracks too that I <laughs> that I feel like I was I like really vibed with. Um, now that I'm sort of starting to, I mean, if you look at our top ten in. Uh, 2021 versus our top 10 in 2022 there is a theme and i feel like our 2022 top 10 is a lot heavier and mine personally as well is a lot heavier um and while like we got way more angst i was gonna say and while all last year i kept like sort of preaching like oh my taste is shifting to like the side and i still do feel that way like i'm much more into the softer side of prog now than i ever was um, but this, this year kind of sh- like, sh- <laughs> I took a step back and, uh, <laughs> so yeah. And anyways, fit for an autopsy. I, I just think it's the better record. I, uh, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely in that camp too. I, I liked the Idola's record and honestly, like I had never heard of them prior to that they year are, so they are my favorite dance gavin dance derivative band like the bands that fall under that quote unquote swan core uh oh, yeah. category they probably are my favorite I'm, i mean some people consider Seder in that category as well so maybe Seder over idola but um yeah depending on like how you lump those them. those two bands uh are the standouts in that sort of category for me so i did want to mention that because i'm not trying to like disc- discount how good this record is yeah, honestly, for me, like I think Idola and Seder do the like Swancore stuff better than like than. Yeah, I'm not a big dance DGD. Gavin Dance fan, as, like, as I've established multiple times. I think for me, it's like the lyrical stuff, whereas like that's what Seder is, and Idola yeah. actually have like good lyrics, and and like that's the thing for me that I guess takes it away from from Dance Gavin Dance. But yeah, the the Fit for an Autopsy record is just like I mean. They had Sea of Tragic Beasts, which was so good. And it's like similar to where we're talking about Silent Planet. It's like, you know, when you have a bar set so high, it's like really hard to overachieve. And then like, I don't know if I like it. Yes, this, uh, oh, what the future holds better than Sea of Tragic Beasts, but it's very close. Like, the... I don't know. It, it might be a little, little better. I think just because there's more standout tracks. But Sea of Tragic Beasts, the like title track, is uh, is probably probably one of my favorite in that like kind of tech death, you know, post deathcore, whatever category yeah, you want to sure. call it. For sure. Category. Um, and then just with this album though, like not disappointing. It's just like I. Th- I got to give it to them too. Yeah. And and this was like, I, I feel like when I looked at this before we like, you know, we really actually only looked at this, these lists like side by side, like right before we started recording this episode. I mean, we really only planned this, like what we put that poll two days ago. Like it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. So this is kind of like, you know, we're, we're flying by the seat of our pants here, but. Um, yeah, we like talked I, about doing the episode, so we had it like in place if we were going to do it. But we wanted to get feedback, and then once we got a a lot of people saying they would like it, uh, you know, we then pulled the trigger. Yeah, so like when I first looked at this list, I kind of was like, just quick glance, I thought I was going to lean Idola here, but I 
I yeah, it's fit for an autopsy. Lock it in. I, I'm uh, glad I've I've brought <laughs> you over to the. I know. The dark originally, side. originally, I didn't even know if that fit for an autopsy record was gonna uh, make my top ten this year. Um, I'm glad that you kept hyping it up so much that I gave it, I gave it enough. I just wore wore you down (laughs) enough. You did. You did. Let the hate flow through you. (laughs) I think this next one, this next one is going to be interesting and I'm glad that you get to do this. (laughs) This is going to be tough. And it's really Uh, funny that these two bands fell in the same, uh, like they both fell at four. Um, because they're they're We've comped them a little bit. Um, they're not yeah. direct comps by any means. Uh, one is significantly heavier than the other. Um, but they do, <laughs> they do songs that are similar. So, you know, enough teasing everyone. So uh, at four in 2021, we had Spirit Box, uh, Eternal Blue. And then at four this past year, we had Rolo Tomasi's Where Myth Becomes Memory. This is going to be fun. Let's hear what you got to say. Oh, God. Why are these all so tough? They are uh, hard. This this one, yeah, this one in well, these next like the last four are going to be really hard. Strangely enough, there's only one on in the last four where I'm looking at it and I'm like, definitively, this is the one I'm picking, and I'm not going to say which one that is, but you can, yeah. <laughs> so I I think for me, um, that Spirit Box album is fantastic. I actually was listening to it today, um, but uh, just because. Colleen no, and it and wasn't I, even actually in prep for this. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It was just because we listened to our we're uh, we listened to our vinyl in alphabetical order. Just I don't know something about the way we listen to them, like the order that they're in based off the records we have. It kind of gives us a nice mix, so we just keep doing that. Um, and then as we add new ones, we like cycle back through and we'll listen to them. And it was just happened to be Spirit Box's turn. Um, so we actually listened to Eternal Blue and then the like. EP or the like the singles collection um and I do I like the singles collection more than I like Eternal Blue. I mean there Blessed are Blessed t- B and Roll of Nines are both better yeah. than anything on Eternal Blue and I will die on that hill. <laughs> yeah, it is just uh and like uh perennial um Yep. It's just there's so many good of the single ones so uh, yeah, I think but Eternal Blue is so good, and comparing it to Rolla Tomasi is, just, I don't know, I think they both have that poppy feel to them at times, um, and they're both heavy at times, but I just, I think what Rolla Tomasi does on this album is, like, they throw in some elements, of like, sort of black metal-like, and some, like, some hardcore at times. They're mixing more genres and doing they're they're more different i know that's horrible uh horrible grammar but they're more uh, different yeah they're more different (laughs) they uh they're just doing different stuff and they do it well and just having never heard of them before this year and then this album hitting so high on both of our lists i think just speaks to like how how good they are and I think just the nature of Eternal Blue not being quite as high on my list as, you know, their other, like their previous releases. Um, I think I got to give it to Rolla Tomasi on this one. It, it, it's hard to do and it hurts me a little, but I think I got to do it. So if Blessed Be and Roll of Nines was on Eternal Blue, I don't even think this would be a conversation, to be honest. No, um, I, Blessed Be for me is like <laughs> top five of like my favorite like tracks of, of all progressive metal, I think. Yeah, and Roll of Nines is so good, too. And Yeah, I love Roll of Nines, too. I just something about Blessed Be just like and hits I me think, in the feels. And I know like I'm in the minority when I'm going to say this, but I'm going to say it anyways because I'll give a shit and I like to be I like to be controversial. Uh oh, um, Edgelord Dan here. Holy Roller is the worst song that Spirit Box has ever written. It is dog shit and everybody loves oh, it wow. and it drives me nuts. I hate the love for this song. It is not that good. Um, I'm, I'm definitely just, it's not. not- 
So it's not the worst song they ever wrote. I, I got a little dramatic there, but it's 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 their most overrated song. That's where I, that's where I'll okay. I'll, that's that's a that's a more fair. <laughs> I, to me, I felt like coming in hot there, man. Yeah. I just wanted to. I, wanted to, <laughs> <laughs> I had to talk you down there a little. I but I definitely are, agree that I think it's overhyped. Like I do think yeah. it it does seem to be like the new like main track for yeah, them is like I anytime just, you talk about spirit box is like holy roller and i, I just do don't enjoy the understand track, but like whenever I, I see people who like love five finger death punch who also love holy roller i'm just like that could, that makes sense actually not that not that it's a five finger death punch song but it's just some it's just i don't even know how to describe this song dude i just don't like it i don't like anything about it um there's there's kind of like a different flow to it and i've I feel like that's it has that like dun, 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 like sort of like electric electronic stuff and, and then I it hate, comes into like I the hate chugs. that like only well known sense and that guy and wait the like chant the like chanting dude. thing. Oh, and I don't mind chanting and stuff and song whatever, but like I just I I just don't vibe with that, that one at in all. particular. And yeah. It just sounds nothing like what I love about Spirit Box. Like the Mara effect suite of songs is so freaking good and then like you give me holy roller like come on and like I, and you give me holy roller as a single after dropping tracks like roll of nines and and blessed be like why um yeah. but thank thankfully there are significantly better songs on this record um halcyon is an amazing song oh uh, yeah I probably the best track on the record um uh, circle with me also goes hard uh, why that's not the standout track versus like although i'm looking at it right now and circle with me actually has more plays so that actually like gives me faith in humanity um, <laughs> faith is the word. but you know constance is such an emotional track the summit is a good song secret garden is a solid song um i don't like sun killer actually or hurt you um so this record for me there's a lot of skippable tracks but there's also a lot of tracks with replay value um, and I haven't forgotten about Rolla Tomasi. So, um, I've gotten all of my spirit box anger and they're, they're new songs, dude. There's like maybe one that's decent, but God, it sounds like some shit you'd hear in like a WWE arena. Like I just, I just thought I'm, I'm a, it. yeah, I'm a little nervous for the new, the new album. Like yeah, you said, there was, there's like one of the tracks off of it. Um, that was like, Oh, that's not, not, not too bad, but. I ultimately don't really like where the they're going with it. Uh, so I am nervous how that's going to turn out. And that's kind of, I think maybe also plays in a little bit to my uh, thing. Cause it's like, well, eternal blue is like the precursor. Like they got more poppy with eternal blue. And right. then this like rotoscope, this, the singles yeah. that they put out, they're kind of going even more into that camp. And whereas like Rolla Tomasi is like very clearly like we do what we want to do and we're mixing whatever genres we want and we're just having fun with it. And yeah. And I don't know. I, I should get off my like spirit box soap box here um, <laughs> <laughs> because I just, there's so much I love about them and they made, so, they make good music. They're all they're You know, they're talented. Courtney LaPond is super talented, has an amazing voice, whatever. Um, and not to bring in a Pittsburgh band into the mix here, but, um, a band called Code Orange, which I feel like most people have heard of, um, because now they're very popular. I think they were nominated for for like the Metal Grammy or some shit last year, two years ago, whatever. Um, they have some heavy, awesome, like records, and you know, kind of growing up, you know, in the metal scene in Pittsburgh, uh, I've seen them live many times, uh. It was always like a crazy event, people jumping on the stage, whatever. Cause they were they were kind of in that hardcore meets like something different fit, you know. Like, it's <laughs> it's interesting. Like it's different. it's they, they probably fit mostly in the hardcore scene. Um and now, like I said, kind of like with with Spirit Box, like their new singles sound like some shit that they would play in a WWE arena. Not, you know, no offense to people that like that stuff. You know, whatever you everyone likes their what they like and it is what it is. But um, so Without Code Orange, that's like exactly what happened with Code Orange, and like that's what makes they me nervous. Yeah, they for literally Spirit did it. They WWE literally, song. yeah. So that's kind of where I came up with that there. But um, yeah, it's it kind of like because once they get that, a lot of times like the when it gets to the point where it's 
played on WWE. I mean, there's there's definitely exceptions like Kill Switch has uh, like when CM Punk's entrance, because I used to watch a ton of wrestling back in the day. Um, but they he had uh, this fire burns or I forget what the track this is. It this fire, this fire burns, whatever um, was a Kill Switch song. And, you know, Kill Switch is sweet, but. I do feel like by the time it gets to WWE, it's become like that sort of like roofer rock, dad rock kind of stuff. Yeah, that like, I listen to Skinnerd and yeah. Spear Box. Like, I just, I don't know. But, um, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you I, like, I, you I like, am exaggerating. But... Like, I, I'm, I'm exaggerating yeah. for effect here. I just want to point that out for all the people who didn't leave as soon as I said that, uh, uh <laughs> Holy Roller is dog yeah. shit. I just want to declare, you know, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but it does bother me that. Well, I think That's it's just because we both love off. Spearbox so much. Like their music is so good. And then like seeing the track that they're going on is like, you just kind of hate to see it become like, you know, like we fear that they're going to become like soulless pop music. Yeah. And, and again, there's nothing wrong with experimenting and going in different directions. And if that's all they're doing, then that's fine. Maybe something cool will come out of it. Who knows? But yeah. I mean, maybe the, the rest tracks... of the album that they're holding back is like more of the stuff that we love. They're just like, testing the fan base with the singles and being like right see that's how to gauge this for. yeah and that's maybe they'll keep for. it still like overall mostly similar but yeah. yeah it is just like you know when it there's a drastic change like that you're like oh no what are you doing to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you know i just spent like a shit ton of time talking about spirit box and this is supposed to be a spirit box versus rolla tomasi situation here so let's switch gears yeah. um that rolla tomasi record is fantastic it uh and Rolo Tomasi as a band is fantastic. Like you said, we just discovered them this year. Um, they take you on a freaking ride. Um, you got songs that remind you of like bands like Haken and uh, the contortionist. Like you said, there's some like black metal borderline black metal style vocalization that happens in some of their songs where you're just like, is this the same band? Um, you know, they, they, the style not not like the composition of the record itself um reminds you of like a between the buried and me record with all the different style changes you know that you come to expect in prog uh it's yeah i mean songs like uh cloaked closer closer i always i accidentally said say closer all the freaking time i, I, I always do that too <laughs> <laughs> closer um drip is a really good song um they're they're heavy at times then there are times where they remind you of a band like spirit box or even sometimes like softer than spirit box um it's it's an interesting mix uh and i do kind of lean rollo tomasi in this matchup even though i just spent an hour talking about spirit box um well i think it's because you got fired up about (laughs) about them like on a a negative uh Notes, so I think that's why it was. Yeah. Whereas, like, there's not. I had to have at least. I had to have at least one major tangent in this episode. I have one in every episode. I'm hoping that's the only (laughs) one. That's your nickname now is Major Tangent. I like it. I like it. I want like a uniform and everything. Um, (laughs) It's your official military (laughs) rule. But yeah, I'm leaning Rolla Tomasi. Um, I'm sorry that because I I picked that and I spent the least amount of time talking about it. But we do probably should we probably should move on to the next one. Um, I'm yeah sorry to everybody who I upset with my Holy Roller comment. I think Spirit Box (laughs) is amazing. I think the Amara Effect Suite is their best work. Um, collective like as a collective, I think it's better than Eternal Blue. Um, I think. Holy Roller and Blessed Be is better than anything that they put on Eternal Blue. I wish that they made the record. Like I wish those Wait, were Holy Roller? There. You mean Or sorry, jeez. Blessed Be, holy shit. Blessed <laughs> Be and Roll of Nines. Sorry. Wow. See, I was that's like, just Whoa. stuck in my head. Um Blessed Be and Rule of Nines is better than anything they put on Eternal Blue. Um and yeah, Holy Roller sucks. Next. <laughs> um did I start this or end it? I probably ended it. So it's your turn. So <laughs> number three. Am I, I right there? I, or did you just not talk at all? And did I no, just I went rant? first and then you right. went. Yeah. <laughs> so this one is uh I for blacked you. Out. This is for, out. for you to to start. So the matchup here is from 2021. We have BT Bam between the Baradimis, Colors 2 versus Monuments in Stasis. And this has to be a hard one for you. 
in particular. Yeah, I hate this. I hate this a lot. <laughs> um, so Monuments and Stasis Record was my album of the year in 2022. Um, I think that uh, Andy Chizik has brought them back to sort of, I, I think I I think I use this exact phraseology. They brought he brought them back to like the mountaintop of progressive metal. I f- I do feel that way. Um, it's it's potentially their best record ever, like Monument's best record. Period. Um, between the buried and me, Colors Two is not their best record. I mean, but it's yeah. still a between the buried and me record. Like, it's still, <laughs> and it's it, still yeah, like it's... it it kind of brings back like themes whether it's lyrically or musically from colors which is arguably their best record um i know i flip flop i feel like most people do um who are between the buried and me fans most people not everyone because some people think parallax is the best record you know parallax is it some people um like myself sometimes will argue that the great misdirect is their best record um but I think the consensus is colors is likely their best record. Like, I think that's sort of the least, like that's the one that's going to get the least argument from people. Um, and with this record sort of bringing back themes lyrically, instrumentally, um, it gives you that nostalgia factor with it also being a really good record. I mean, it stands alone as a good record. It's, you know, you don't have to go listen to colors to listen to colors too. But um, if colors is such a nostalgia record, nostalgic record for you like it is for a lot of people that listen to this genre um i think you get more out of colors too than someone coming in fresh and just like listening to it like this is your first introduction to between the bear to me oh fuck um (laughs) (laughs) man this is tough uh monuments to like cardinal red is such a good track and uh, the yeah. Sumerian, such a good track. Damn, dude. Uh, <laughs> can I punt? Um, <laughs> you cannot. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to lean monuments right now, and I want to hear what you have to say, and I can be swayed. <laughs> yeah, this is... Uh... I, I, this is definitely a tough one. I think I really enjoyed Colors too. I think like putting slapping the name Colors on it was risky to begin with. Just like Colors One being like you said, for most people, it's not like a hot take to say that Colors is the best or your favorite between the Bear to Me album. So saying Colors Two is like, oh man, you're making a sequel to your best album. Like this can this could go horribly awry. And I think they did a great job. And I know we talked about that in our album of the year episode for 2021. But, you know, I still feel that way that it is a solid album. But I feel like it's not as good as Colors One. And like you said, it's not their best album. And I mean, some people may make the argument that it is their best. Like some people may like their newer sound better um but i feel like it's not popular that people would say colors 2 is their favorite of all bt bam albums um whereas i've been seeing a lot of love for this monuments album and it does have so many standout tracks i mean i i do think that bt bam's album has some like the uh was the uh i'm blanking on the name the future never seen future shock yes future shock that's what um and is that the one that brings back answer the sky uh so the, like sleep on fly on in your mind you can fly i think so yeah it's i'm it's been actually like colors 2 is an album that i i listened to a lot that year and it ranked high for me but and i enjoyed it but it is one of those ones because like you said it's based you know, it's kind of like Easter eggs for with of colors one on it that it just like it's makes bad habits. Want... Sorry to interrupt you. Bad habits is the one that brings back into the stick into the sky. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did a quick yeah. Google search. So bad habits, <laughs> uh, never seen future shock and, uh, like 
prehistory or prehistoric. I always mess that one up. Um, those are all like really solid tracks. Uh, but I just think that like Lavos, Cardinal Red, the Sumerian, uh, oh, like uh, pretty much all of them, honestly. Uh, makeshift <laughs> Harmony. Yeah, I mean, uh, Fix the Error was solid and the music video was cool. Never Seen Future Shock is really good. Bad Habits is my favorite track on the record. And Ant of the Sky is, I mean, Colors is so good, dude. And uh, anything that like sort of like gives you the feel of, you know, whenever they bring, whenever they bring back that like sleep on, fly on, like that's just as cool to me because that's one yeah. of my favorite moments of Colors. Um it's it it is hard though. Like I yeah, mean, it no, is, it is it tough. Is, it I is just... hard, and it's hard for me to pick anybody over between the buried and me, just because of how pinnacle of a band that is for me. Um, honestly, yeah. if I think really, you know, me picking this Monuments record and potentially us picking this Monuments record over Colors Two is just a testament to how good that record is. And I've not seen enough people like with this record on their like top ten. Like I've not I've not seen it enough to where I feel like it went under the radar and it shouldn't have. Yeah, I I mean I I do feel like I've seen some uh like the YouTube and Twitch streamers that like review music and stuff that seem to like Nick Nocturnal, I did a monuments um thing, uh stuff like what that. What do you so, think of it? He he really dug it. He's okay. he was like headbanging <laughs> and like jamming to it, and he was like, "Oh damn!" Like when it comes to like the heavy riffs and you know, in typical like, yeah, funny Nick Nocturnal fashion, made the like the stank faces and was like, "Oh!" and you know, getting yeah. all excited and stuff. I just I he think seemed that, to love it. I think that Monuments record went too hard to not pick it, but it does hurt me to pick <laughs> anything I know Veritimi's ever made. It is tough. Um, so, but, but I do I, but, think it's yeah. such a good like Cardinal Red is, despite the fact that I had Conjurer and um and I actually so it was Conjurer and um Coheed over Monuments, but I still think Cardinal Red might be my favorite track out of the year. Just you know, it's just such a yeah, good. It's, it's song. probably top five top ten for me but i would even put the sumerian or Camarian or however that's yeah that pronounced. one's really good too um above it that might be my track of the year but that, the fact that i'm saying that that's my album of the year and those two are both like top five top ten tracks of the year i mean it just justifies my choice i, I i'm sticking with it monuments yeah. for me i was gonna say if uh you know since it was your album of the year that would make this decision like even easier because if you voted BT Bam, but they weren't. It wasn't your album of the year last year, right? Or the no, prior year? No, Delta Sleep. That's yeah, that's right. Yeah, so if I think then it might it have been, been two though, it might have been number two. It oh, was up okay. there, but still. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so right now we are. Twenty twenty two has five versus two for twenty twenty. And there's only so. two left, so we we're done. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're still going to go through these last two because I think yeah. it's going to be a fun conversation. Yeah. Especially that top one. Yeah. So you had to, uh, you had to make that yeah. call. So, so I number guess this two, is my turn. Oh. Number two, Vola Witness was our 2021 number two versus our 2022 number two, Fallujah's Imperion. Oh. <laughs> this this is... one's tough for me, too. Yeah, it's tough. Um, just because this year I was just with Fit for an Autopsy and Conjure was like feeling the kind of like tech deathy stuff. So I know Fallujah didn't land as high as those two albums did, but it was still a very solid album and still landed high on my list. But with Vola's Witness being my album of the year, and uh, like I still listen to it regularly. I f I think I have to give it to to Vola. Just uh, I. It's it's kind of like funny because it's so like contradictory to my other selections of picking fit for an autopsy and conjurer over 
bands that were, you know, arguably softer. But I think it, uh, Fuller's instrumentation is still like super heavy. It's just like their vocals that are generally softer. But I just really liked what they did with that album. And it's just really different. And I don't know, it just kind of, it's, it's stuck with me over, you know, two years, <laughs> year and a half, I guess, um, that it's been out. And, uh, the, the Fallujah album still has time to grow on me. So maybe if we had this conversation again next year, <laughs> my, uh, my decision would change, but I think I got to give it to Bola in this one. I disagree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think that Fallujah record is, is really, really good. Borderline. Perfect. Uh, into the event tide is the best song they've re- written since, uh, uh, the void alone, which is so good. Um, it's not as good as dreamless this record. Um, but it's damn close. Uh, embrace oblivion. So good. Radiant ascension. So good. Um, but honestly into the event tide is probably a top five track for me last or this past year, 2022. Um, Vola, that record was really good as well. Um, they're, they're kind of like in the asteroid, like you could, I think you maybe even said this earlier. They're kind of in the asteroid category for me, um, where I like a lot of the stuff they do. And then a lot of the, some of the stuff they do, I'm just like, uh, I don't understand. I don't really vibe with this <laughs> that much. Um, straight lines is such a good song. Head mounted sideways. Good song. 24 light years. Honestly, oh, damn it. Now I'm like rehashing this shit. I really like, um, I, 24 light years is like a cool song for me. Cause it also sort of fits in that, like, uh, that like sleep token Siamese, like the like slower song that kind of builds a little bit. It doesn't build as much as those songs, but it kind of stays relatively slow throughout but it is still really good um yeah, i know you're a big fan of stone leader falling down yeah it's got that like um, kind of mashuga e riff in there and it gets like he actually has some uh some like growls yeah a bit like some harsh vocals in there right future bird uh, future bird's cool some of this some of the stuff is weird like these black claws like sometimes i vibe with it <laughs> um, I thought it was an interesting, an interesting choice to include Shaman on that, on that track. Um, I don't know, man. I just, I think Into the Event Tide's better than anything on this record. For me, for me personally, again, and most everything we're saying here, is, you know, we probably should have clarified <laughs> this in the beginning. This is our, I mean, if you don't already understand this, this is just our opinions, but um, by no means is this gospel, but. Uh, yeah. I do feel like Into the Event Tide from Fallujah, that Fallujah record is better than anything on this record and has more replay value for me than anything on this record. Um, that being said, that's not to discount, you know, that's not to say that this record has no replay ba- value for me because um, it does. I still listen to a lot of the tracks on this record, but, and I, I had it relatively high. I had it like four or five, but, uh, yeah, I'm gonna stick with Fallujah. I disagree. I'm not gonna change either. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I don't think I can uh, I can change. I would. Yeah, I don't. Either. I don't. With I wouldn't expect my, you to budge. My album of the year, and I still enjoy it so much. And um, uh, be just like from. I I do agree. I guess that I feel like some of the tracks on this Fallujah album are some of their their best work. I think like. Overall, it's not my favorite of their albums, whereas Witness is my favorite Vola record. I do like In Mazes a lot, too. It's probably a close second, but I don't know. Witness yeah. just, just is my favorite of theirs. So when I'm comparing the two, to me, it's like, well, Empyrean's probably like a close second of their albums for me, whereas Witness is my favorite. Plus, it was my album of the year last year, so that's the hill I'm going to die on. His I was going to say, I, I look at it, too, where I probably agree with what you just said. Like, I think Witness might be my favorite Vola record, and Fallujah is, pro- is not probably, it is a close second to Dreamless. But I just think, like, I have Fallujah, like, so much higher, maybe, than on Vola on just my list of just ge- in general, like bands I enjoy or just, you know, stylistically I enjoy Fallujah's music more than Vola. 
um, certain, you know, certain moods or whatever. Like I, I would rather listen to Vola than Fallujah. Um, it's so is, funny how inconsistent we are. I know. Like I was, uh, <laughs> you know, you did, you didn't want you, or not that you didn't want to, but you were like, not a, like with conjurer, like it wasn't really on yeah. your list and stuff. And then like, <laughs> we're arguing about and I'm on the hill of Vola and you're choosing <laughs> Fallujah. We make no sense. We're complicated yeah. humans. Oh, well, I mean, I don't know. Fallujah just does something different for me that Conjurer doesn't even do. Like I would pick that Fallujah record over that Conjurer record too. Um, they just, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm more into their sound, like that sort of atmospheric, like, uh, tech death meets, you know. Yeah. Empyrean does like give me like some exoplanet, contortionist kind of yeah a vibes bit. a bit yeah it's from, there, from so. an instrumental instrumental standpoint for sure yeah so like i do appreciate them but it is a tough decision to make but i guess sir or so are we both locking in and we're doing a it's a wash all right yep all right this is the one i was excited about and uh this so is the one you get to make the first call right perfect i i know is i already that, know my answer oh you do oh yeah Okay. All right. Well, uh, 2021. So this is our, uh, number one, number one, uh, 2021's album of the year, as according to progressive gentlemen was Delta sleeps spring Island. And for last year, 2022, it was Coheed and Cambria's Vaxis Two: a window of the waking mind. Dan, what are your thoughts? <laughs> Uh, man, I'm surprised everyone... you already have a decision so quick. Oh yeah, and it's actually not even really close for me, which is crazy. Uh. Um, because I feel like everybody listening to this who listens to our podcast and understands that I have to mention Coheed in every single episode. I mean, I don't have to, and I've gotten better. There's been a couple <laughs> episodes where I've just forgot, um, or it just didn't. I mean, usually I don't make it a point to do this. It just comes out naturally. Like I have a random thing that I'm like, oh well, Coheed did this once. It just happens. Um, no worries. I met the quota before this by saying the children. That's of the true. You s- like literally, like within two minutes. Yeah. Um, Ladders of Supremacy is a top five Coheed song ever written. Um, top ten, uh, top five is that's hard. They've written a lot of good songs. It's a top Coheed song. How about that? Top ten percent. Like, <laughs> let's go with that. Um, it's the best song that they've written s- probably since Good Apollo. Is Gravity's Union better? I don't. It's tough. They have a lot of good songs, but it's it's really fucking good. Um, <laughs> those last three songs is the best suite of songs since the willing wells. And I mean, some people might argue, um, the, uh, key entity extraction suite of songs is better. Um, I, I could see that argument, but I still, I'm, and, you know, I'm just trying to basically say these three songs are really, really, really good. Um, Delta sleep has the better record. Uh, <laughs> spring. I was Island. waiting for it. I had a feeling <laughs> that it was going that route, but I was like, uh, keep the keep the listeners on their toes spring sp- and it, it hurts me a little bit to like pick anybody over coheed but in the same vein that it hurt for me to pick anybody over between the buried and me because those are like my two favorite bands um but spring island is consistently good from start to finish there's not a skippable track on the record i literally don't skip a song on the record and i still listen to it from front to back like once a week Um, so I understand that there's, you know, this is very opinion based and there are people that maybe just don't vibe with Delta sleep and they'll hear me say this and be like, this is ridiculous. If you're a Coheed and Cambria fan and you've not listened to Delta sleep yet, especially if you like the softer side of Coheed, which for the most part, they're not like, they're not a heavy band. Um, you're doing yourself a disservice if you haven't listened to Delta sleep yet, period. Go listen to their entire discography. I think I just found you one of your new favorite bands. Um, and Spring Island is flawless. Honestly, when we did our top 10, like prog records, I didn't put this on my list and you did. Um, and I regret that because my whole thing was, I want to let it grow on me. I haven't listened to it. It hasn't been out long enough for me to put it over a lot of these other records that I've been listening to for five, six, 10 years. Um, this is, it's, it's a, this is a timeless classic record for me. Where the Coheed record, they did a lot of experimenting, which I actually liked more than I thought I would. 
Um, and maybe against any other record on this list, I might pick this Coheed record. Um, but man, that, I, that just shows how much I like Spring Island. Yeah, it's, I, I'm honestly like from like how much you've talked about how like about the Spring Island record and, you know, I know how much you've enjoyed it. I'm honestly not that surprised. Um, I think because I also know that like while you did enjoy the Coheed album, it's not your favorite of theirs, but like this Spring Island record of theirs seems to be like, like you said, there's not a bad track. You listen to it from front to back. Um, and I did, I did like the Coheed record more than I thought I would. Yeah. Um, so I feel like there's something to be said about that. And I, and I do feel very strongly about those last three tracks, uh, ladders of supremacy, rise, nine, Asha and, uh, window of the waking mind, the title track, which is basically like a 10 minute prog opera. It's very good. Yeah. Um, I agree that I think those are three really high tier Coheed tracks. Um, and this album actually, I think my top five songs on my Spotify wrapped were all from <laughs> this album uh because i list, just listened to it so so much um and i love it to death but i also my spotify wrapped also had like half of spring island so like i i think my top 10 was like five of coheed's songs <laughs> And then there were like two Spring Island tracks and then like three other. Mine was tracks. very similar too. Mine was so very similar. the fact that like Spring Island being from the previous year and it ranked very high for me too. It, it, I think I actually put it second to Vola. I want to say, or maybe it was third. I don't remember yeah, exactly where I, I, I don't remember exactly either, but it was it was still high on your list. I do think it yeah. was second, but I don't 100 percent remember. Yeah, for some reason I was thinking it was Vola, then it Delta was, Sleep, right. and then Spirit Box was three. Yep, that's correct. Yeah. I don't know how I remember that. My brain wastes space for useless information, but <laughs> <laughs> uh nonetheless. Uh it ranked high for me, as did this album, but the fact that I still had so many of the songs in my top played. And like, it's just, it, it fits like more, more moods. Like you can listen to it in more situations um, where, I mean, I think Kohi does have like, you know, they have ladders of supremacy, which is more like heavy and like proggy. Um, but then they have the like poppy, like dancey stuff too. So I, I guess it does also fit a bunch of different moods, but I feel like m the, overarching theme of that coheed album is very like poppy synthy like dancey kind of like pop heed um and it does have our love which is arguably in my opinion one of the worst coheed songs ever written <laughs> coming in just, i just want to keep coming in with the hot takes i'm having fun with this you're just gonna you're just gonna anger it the, everybody it is the holy roll no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> not this again <laughs> But yeah, it it does uh it hurts me a bit to uh to do it too just because of my my love for Coheed, but that Delta Sleep record is just something else and it's so good from front to back and the detail is such a good song. Such a good song. I mean they're all good, but like that track in particular just I love so much and I'm going to have to go like look in the mirror and make sure that my key work tattoo is still on my body after making <laughs> this decision. It's disappearing. It's just fading. <laughs> you can no longer, you got to get a, uh, you got to get blacked out now. <laughs> you but, blasphemer. But no, I, I agree completely. I mean, it's, it's Delta sleep. That's, that's just, it's the better record. It really is. And I think just overall, it's the better record. Like, um, I think for, for me, like, Spring Island, like you said, I th I think for me, Delta Sleep's problem, Spring Island is probably my favorite of their records. But if you pit against, like, one of my favorite Coheed records, I think, like, I would pick Coheed in that situation. Oh, yeah. But, and, and as much as I really, really, really like this record, and as much as I like Delta Sleep, um, Good Apollo beats everything that they've written, which, that, that, I mean, that's just an all-time prog rock record for me. 
Yeah, um, and I think that's but, why, like, I, but, I wanted to, like, express that for the listeners. That was like, we're yeah. not saying we like Delta Sleep overall more than Coheed. It's no. like, they're both great bands and, and stuff, but I think it's just because of where Avaxis two lands versus, like, their other albums versus Delta Sleep is like, they both these albums ranked high, but Delta Sleep were saying this is their arguably their best record. And they do have other good music too. I mean, Delta Sleep, uh, Ghost City is such a great record. Uh, Twin Galaxy is another great record. Um, yeah. They have a couple EPs that are good. Uh, they have a, a like a reimagined style record where they do like acoustic versions of a lot of their songs in like different places around the world. Also really cool. Basically, what I'm trying to say is. If you're listening to us talk about these two records and you're like, how, why would they pick Delta Sleep over Coheed in this instance? I, I honestly genuinely feel like we just found like another band for you to like love genuinely um, because I feel very strongly about Coheed as everybody knows. And yet I picked this record. Um, so I, I really feel like, you know, don't don't take this as how dare they take this as, oh, wow, I just discovered some new music. Unless you already know the two bands and you think I'm crazy, then that's fine, too. <laughs> what it is. Yeah, well, we, I mean, we definitely like, you know, we want to get the feedback and see what you guys think. And uh, are, are we crazy out of our minds for some of the picks that we did? Uh, you know, it's I, I like guess we can feedback. we can officially announce here. I mean, we kind of already did. Right. We kind of reached the. The point of no return, but uh, so overall, 2022, we feel after going through this little exercise here, 2022 is the better year for music. Um, but they were both good years, and these these were tough, dude. I mean, I, yeah. I figured these would be difficult. Uh, I honestly felt like it was going to be a little closer. I honestly thought that there was a potential that we were going to be tied at the end of this and have to like start. <laughs> start digging deeper for like other records that dropped this year to see if we could like put in like a, like a bonus round. But, um, but yeah, I mean this, this <laughs> <Sudden> was, death. <laughs> this was fun. Actually. I liked to kind of think yeah. about this. I like ranting against, uh, against spirit boxes, Holy roller for 30 minutes. That was fun for me. It's your, um, your Peter it Griffin's very, grind my gears segment. It's was, it was very therapeutic. Uh, maybe I'm going to go listen to it and now I'll love it. Uh, I just needed to get that off my chest. <laughs> Next episode will be a confessional. Uh, like, I, just, I, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Episode, <laughs> episode 20, whatever we're on. Uh, Dan likes Holy Roller now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this was fun. I enjoyed this. This was cool. We should do this again. We should... Uh, I don't know, or do something. So I like this. Like, this, we'll, we'll gauge what people think. Maybe this will yeah. like completely bomb, and then we'll <laughs> never do this again. But this I, it's, was interesting. I like the debate stuff. Like, it's I'm I always like a a nice heated debate with uh, maybe, with things, and so maybe we I, could like pit bands like discographies against each other. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> like, kind of do sort of take like our artist spotlight yeah, thing, but like, then make it like verses. But, BT Bam versus Coheed or something. <laughs> yeah. And do a debate oh, club. Oh, that fall. Hold on. So it's self-titled. Okay. So it would be Alaska versus Good Apollo. So Oof. Good Good Apollo would win that for me. But, Don't spoil it. Um, <laughs> I was just trying to think like how hard, because if it was like Colors versus Good Apollo, I might have a freaking meltdown. Um. Anyways. Uh, so that could be fun. That could be fun. Uh. But yeah, I enjoyed this. Uh, 2022, the superior year for music, apparently. Um, tell us how wrong we were. Um. <laughs> yeah, also, I mean, there's like albums that we may just have not listened to and not ranked that may have potentially skewed either of these years' results. So would have then changed the entire course of all of this. So could have even if we like mixed the order up too here, like it could have it could have potentially went a different way. But this is the way we did it. It was fun. I mean, yeah. I, I Delta Sleep that record is probably better than all the all the records on this list for me. So it's like they 2021 for me had the best record, but I think 2022 just looking at this list was probably like more consistent for me. Yeah, um, that's what I was thinking too. Whenever like coming into it was that I was thinking that oh man, 2021 is probably going to take it. Just thinking about like, oh, we had Spirit Box, Vola, BT Bam. It's like you rat off those names and it's like, holy cow. But then just I think it's 
just this year's stuff also is very good and very consistently good. And there was also like, I I feel like our list for this past, like for 2022 is different. Like there's a lot of different stuff. Whereas 2021's was a little more close. Like you had a lot more of that, like metalcore progressive, like progressive metalcore stuff with Idola era spirit box kind of falling in that camp sleep token. You know, it's all, all kind of fits together. Siamese. And so I think, yeah. And I think the Vola too. Um, but then this year being more varied, it's like, I think a little more like Jack of all trades. So that's yeah, probably something what for every it. mood. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, thank you guys for, uh, for checking this out. Uh, yeah. And if you for, stuck in for this long, geez, let me, let us know if you were, if you regret, uh, voting for us to actually do this episode after you listen to it. Um, <laughs> yeah. let us know if we should just uh, retire an, this right away. An hour and a um, half of my life. I'll never get back. <laughs> was it really that long? It's because yeah. of the 30 minute spirit box, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, let's wrap this shit up. So uh, thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. Um, yeah, thanks everyone. We're gonna we're gonna try to keep dropping content as consistently as possible, though it's probably gonna get a little rocky here moving forward. Matt's got a uh, class start. Class start back up. And, yeah. Um, we'll so. try and keep them like you know keep them on that. We'd like to do at least an episode a month. Um, right. But if we can, you know, shoot for like the the bi-weekly cadence during the uh while i'm in class i will uh will try my best yep and uh be sure to check our instagram page we do have a giveaway um going on i think when this episode drops it'll be live so um we're giving away a signed contortionist language cd um the booklet is signed it's not the plastic which would be real stupid so um <laughs> sign the booklet is signed by the band and uh yeah, I think that's kind of a cool giveaway. Something something autographed by our yeah, I honestly want to one of my to favorite it. bands. Yeah. <laughs> um so yeah, be sure to check that out and figure out how to how to enter for that. And uh yeah, as always, thanks guys so much. We appreciate it and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.